Hello everybody, my name is Alex and today's video we're going to be continuing on with the VR Shooter template. Uh, we're going to be continuing on with the locomotion movement, uh, implementing the gravity uh, in order to actually uh, make movements a little bit better, um, <laughs> for lack of better words. Um, so we'll be implementing the gravity for the, uh, for the pawn for the VR player. Um, as always, before you go and jump into the video, um, like, subscribe, helps out a ton. And with that, we'll go and jump right into the video. All right, so here we are. Um, so before we actually go ahead and jump into actually creating um, a simulated gravity for the VR player, um, let's go ahead and uh, explain exactly what it is uh, I'm intending to go about doing this. Um, so there's um in order to actually get this to work uh what we're going to want to do is a couple of things first off we're going to start by um slightly changing around the um the movement uh the movement functions that we created in the last video um, the reason being is that we're going to be making sure that we're always going up um whenever we're moving around, at least a little bit. The, the reason for this is we don't want to end up going through the ground or anything like that. So by making it so we go up, when we go up a slope, then what should happen is we will actually, rather than going through the slope or even just falling through it or anything like that, we'll actually end up going up it. Now in order to actually make it so that way we will still stay to the ground, we're going to do is we're going to do a trace down to the ground and we're going to keep moving down so long as there is nothing below us if there is something below us we won't do anything at all and we'll just leave it be um, I'll go more into detail as we go through and I'll explain a little bit better but that is uh, generally what we'll end up doing so I've gone ahead and opened up the motion control upon as you can see um, and right here, this is the part that we want to change around. So looking at this, this is what actually controls our movement. Rotation doesn't really affect much in this scenario. It's only going to be the uh, movement on whatever terrain we're using that we're going to want to focus on. So the part that we actually want to change is actually going to be our world direction here. So we're actually going to detach this real quick. And let me actually go ahead and bring this down so it's a little bit more organized. And we're going to just go and split this real quick. So there's a couple different ways we can actually go about doing this. Um, I'm going to be going for the absolute simplest way. Um, and that's just going to be we're going to plug in our X and Y. And then our world direction Z is actually what determines our up and down. So if you actually go and look at this. You can see right over here, this is our Z, and you can actually see that controls our up and down. So by manipulating the Z so that way we set it to a constant, say for example 1, this will mean that we're always going to go up a little bit. And it will not be something that will be uh, terribly noticeable by the player. Uh, an alternative to this as well is we actually could just take this and just get an absolute from it. This will mean that we'll always get a positive value no matter what direction we're facing. So if we're facing down, um, in case you don't recall, the because of the way the floating pond movement works, when we look down and we go forward, we'll actually go down in the world space, at, even to the point where we're sinking through the ground and things like that. Um, by doing uh, an absolute, we'll actually uh, reverse that so that way looking down will still bring us up. Um, so quite frankly there would be no way to come down other than gravity. So we're going to go and do that and just for just to be safe we're also going to do it with the um, Y as well. Uh, let's go ahead and split both of these and we will set this again to another constant for our Z and just go and pass through our X and Y. So that's the first part done. That, that's the simple part. So this will, this will keep us from ever not being able to go up a slope. Uh, this constant may need to be changed uh, if you're going up steeper slopes or anything like that. 
But for what we're focused on, this will work just fine. Um, the, the environment we actually have as well, if you actually look, we don't actually have any slopes or anything anyways, aside from the edge. So quite frankly, I'm not too worried about that um, for this scene. Okay. Um, now to create our gravity, we're going to first find our tick. Uh, where's our tick? Do we not have that? There it is. Okay, so as you can see, we actually already have it uh, controlling a few things. This is actually currently controlling our uh, teleportation, um, which is actually something we deactivated at uh, during the uh, last video. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect this, and I'm actually just going to bring this right down here, so that way we can just start straight from uh, scratch with our tick. All right. So in order to do this, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to first check to see if there's anything right below us. So we can actually do this using a line trace. And you can see we actually have a couple. We have line trace by channel, profile, objects. Um, channel tends to be the one that I usually go for. Is I think it's a little bit better to use. Um, but in order to explain how this works, let's go ahead and have a quick look in here. So if we actually look at the collision profile for anything, I'm, I'm going to look at the actual environment that we have right here. So this is going to be the walls and the ground. If we actually look at this, um, we can actually go into our static mesh and we can go down to collision. Down here we see our collision presets and all of this. What the channel is, is if we actually go and set this to custom, uh, you can actually see we have all these different types of collisions. These are each called channels. Um, so we can actually uh, detect what thing we were colliding with. If we're colliding with something that's visible, uh, so something that is considered camera. Um, these are the ones that we mostly want to focus on actually right now. Um, world static, world dynamic, pawn, physics by, vehicle, and destructible. Um, now, depending on what it is you're making some of these you're probably not going to really end up using all that often world static and world dynamic tend to be uh what are often used for the environment um actually i think so we actually have it set to world static right now so the environment itself is actually world static and this is actually in case you're unsure this is how it actually responds to everything else uh, all the things that are visible camera world all of this um so if something else that was world static were to come into contact with it based off of what this is saying it will act as a block which means that nothing will pass through it uh, and then of course how it, it actually behaves also depends on what the other thing colliding with it is is it also set to block to block uh, if it is then it will block um, and it essentially won't go through if it's set to overlap or ignore though it will completely fall through um, but that's kind of a general gist of how that works. So let's go ahead. Um, I'll actually leave this as custom. Uh, and I'm actually going to set this to world dynamic. Um, actually, no, we'll leave it world static. I think world static will still work fine. So we'll go and leave it world static. And at this, so if we actually look at the line trace, we can actually see we have a couple different uh, things that we're looking for here. Um, let me go and drop this down. Uh, so let's see here. So let's start with the start and the end. So, f so for the start and end, this is actually going to be based off of uh, world position, if I recall. Uh, it does not say here. Uh, if I recall, it functions based off world position, which means that simply saying it to zero 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 and then just saying a constant right below us isn't going to cut it. So in order to actually get around this, what we're actually going to do is we're going to get uh, actor world transform uh, not of ourself world location uh, okay so we'll go ahead and get the world location of the default scene room and we'll pass this in to our start uh, and then to get our down um, there's a couple different ways to go about doing this. The simplest one is quite frankly going to be to break our vector. Then we can, uh, we'll, we'll just go and split this here. Pass in our X and Y as normal. And then we're actually going to take our current Z 
and subtract it by a constant. I'll leave it as we'll leave it as one for now. I think one should still work just fine. And we'll pass that into the Z. So this will create a line trace that actually starts at wherever our current world location is and then extends down uh, exactly one unit below wherever that location is. Um, the unit I believe actually does convert to a to an actual measurement. I don't actually remember what the actual measurement is but it does convert to an actual measurement so whatever that measurement would be. Alright so now that we have uh, all this uh, this basic setup done. Um, the rest of this should pretty much all stay just fine the way it is. Okay, so um, trace color, trace hit, uh, all this kind of stuff, we actually don't need to worry about. Uh, this is actually for debugging. So if, uh, if you want to make sure that your line trace was working or make sure it's showing up in the right place or anything like that, you can actually go into here and see draw debug time. Uh, type, I'm sorry. Um, and what this will actually do is this will actually draw a line that is visible while you're testing it. Um, and it will create a line from wherever it's starting as you set it and where it's stopping as you set it. So it's good for just checking to make sure everything's working correctly. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, you know, there should be no reason that this isn't working right now. So we'll just go and leave uh, the debug stuff all alone. Um, and of course we have it ignoring self and all this other stuff. All right, so next we actually want to see what it is we're getting out. So let's go and break this real quick. And you can see we actually have a whole bunch of different things that we're actually getting uh, from our hit. Uh, you can see that we're getting our what, what actor we're hitting, uh, components, bones, time, uh, distance, even what location uh, it's getting hit at. So we have all this information that we could use. The only thing we're concerned about at the moment is the hit actor. Um, we do want to make sure that this is valid when we're hitting something. So let's go ahead and actually run is valid. Uh, there we go. And we'll just go ahead and run this through here. So if this is valid, then we should be just fine. There, you know, that means that we did in fact hit something. There's nothing that we need to worry about. There's no reason for us to have to drop or anything like that. Um, however, if we didn't find something, that means that there's nothing there in that one little unit that we cast below us, which means that whatever happened, which means that we actually do need to move down at this point. We do need to apply our gravity. So in order to do this, we're actually just going to uh, move our our player down. So it, we can actually go and do this by, so we, we'll do this by actually grabbing our default scene root and we'll just go ahead and uh, set actor, uh, set location, there we go. Uh, set world location and we want to pass that in through is not valid. And for our new location, we actually want to take whatever location we're at, and we just want to bring us down one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set this to, let's see here, we'll set this to uh, get world location. Go ahead and split this. We'll just go and split them both. Pass in our X, our Y, and then our Z. And then at this point, we do want it to subtract by another constant. Um, again, based off how fast you're moving or anything like that, you may want to um, change the constant that you have here. I'll leave it for one at one for now, um, just because that should be a perfectly fine number. Um, and with that, that should be all of our gravity implemented for the player. So we'll go and give this a quick test run and see just how well it runs and see if anything needs tweaking. All right, so. Uh, going back into our blueprint code, there were a few just minor little quick changes that uh, I ended up making. Um, some of this will probably still need to be slightly tweaked again uh, in order to actually make this work a little bit more smoothly. So going down here, um, this is actually down here in our uh, tick function. Uh, I actually ended up uh, increasing the speed at which we go down uh, for our gravity. I found that one tended to be kind of slow. Um, it felt a lot more like a feather falling down. 
Um, however, that may still need to be tweaked a little bit, and I'll get into that once uh, I go ahead and show you how it's functioning right now. Uh, but going over here, um, I also did have to make a few changes as well to the uh, movement controls. Uh, reason being is that something I didn't take into account is when we actually go into a negative direction um, based off the thumbstick. So in this case, it would be either uh, left or down. Um, then you actually had an issue where uh, it would actually still go down because that that is a negative value. So it's actually only in reverse of what it is we set. So I actually got around this situation by setting our constant to zero for the Z and then just set adding a second movement input that would only affect our up and down and passing through our axis value as an absolute in, or, in order to make sure that we're not going to constantly keep going up. Um, and, that tended, or, and that seemed to solve the whole issue there. Now if we actually go and jump into here, um, I do want to uh, show you as well why it is I think that the uh, constant for gravity might still need to be changed a little bit. So you can actually see if we actually move around. Um, it for the most part works pretty well. Um, the only issue that we seem to have at this point is that um, in case you ha in case you're unable to see, when we move around, we actually go up quite a bit, and then when we actually fall down as well, because it goes down 30 units now. Um, when it's not detecting it at one unit distance, then it's actually dipping us down into the floor quite a bit, uh, which is a bit of an issue. Um, and you can actually see that too if you actually see how the shadow separating from the uh, from the holster right here. Um, but other than that, everything works pretty well. Um, you know, aside from the fact that we go up into the air and then sink down to the ground constantly. <laughs> Um, you know, everything still works fine. You know, I, I can't really go up into the air or anything like that. I can't go down to the ground. Um, I'm still, you know, for the most part stuck it, stuck to the ground, which uh, was the whole focus uh, implementing the gravity and everything, uh, which is good. That, that means that uh, that did its job. All right, so with that, that is the gravity implemented for the VR player. Um, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Um, again, like I said, some of those uh, little constants will probably need a little bit of tweaking, um, as well as probably the distance on the line trace in order to make it work a little bit better. Um, but other than that, everything works, you know, exactly as it should. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, if you want to see this project, um, I'm actually putting it in a GitHub repository. Um, you know, as I do these tutorials, um, it's all going in there. Um, more often than not before the videos come out even. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check this out, it'll actually be in the description. Uh, but with that, uh, that's it for this video. So see ya.